we're in. There we go. Very clearly, there's a couple of issues. One, uh, in relation to the A&E. Louder. louder. In, in relation, it's a couple of issues, really. In relation to the A&E, uh, we know, don't we, that there is not sufficient capacity either at Queen's to deal with the issues at the moment or at King George's. So if there isn't su sufficient capacity at the moment, why on earth are we taking away one A&E and putting that into uh, one that hasn't got this sufficient capacity at the moment and can't cope at the moment? Plus, I believe that the people of Redbridge absolutely deserve their own A&E. It's no, no way is it acceptable that uh, the people from Redbridge are expected to travel all the way to Romford if they're in need of emergency treatment. On the other issue, in relation to maternity, I think that's even more important. There are four, far more cases in Redbridge um, where mothers are need, need hospital treatment or need to be looked after in hospitals uh, when it comes to having um, the maternity birth because there are places in Redbridge where it's not suitable for people to have home births and because of the demographics of the borough as well uh, there are those that can't have home births. So again why would you therefore take away from Redbridge which has a higher need and move it to Romford? It doesn't make any sense at all. Pleasure. Uh, from a Havering perspective um, the issues are um, one of uh, effectively that uh, the A&E department here uh, would have a, a greater influx of uh, patients coming from the Redbridge area. This would obviously have an effect on the ability of the trust to deliver, uh, certainly on things such as the maximum type waiting times and things like that, uh, which I believe it struggles to manage at the moment. There are other issues in terms of havering, in terms of the uh, proposed housing and other developments that are happening in the area. This will put a burden on the A&E currently uh, at, Old Church, at, um, at, King George, at at uh, Queen's Hospital and uh, this, this obviously will have an impact as well. Um, plus the other uh, government issues around uh, housing and um, the uh, changes in housing policy uh, and the issues there with uh, the fact that there'll be people moving out into the sort of surrounding areas around uh, the M adjoining the M25 uh, where housing is cheaper and that will then have a further impact on the needs, the health needs in the area which will have an impact on uh, the A&E and A&E weights. Yeah, oh, one second. Yep. Uh, Bob Littlewood, leader of the Labour Group of Redbridge Council, um, and actually a bus user and pedestrian, and it took me about an hour to get here this morning. Um, and that's going to be a real issue for people in South Hillford trying to get here for their services um, when they don't have their own private transport. And it is a very, very difficult journey. Uh, pleased uh, to say that the faith groups, all the political parties, councillors, and the thousands of people who have signed numerous petitions about this are all on our side on this issue. We must keep local services in Ilford for the people that live in that area. No question. Yeah, there you go. Okay, it's Ian Bond, Deputy Leader of Redbridge Council. Um, I think there are two issues really that concern local people. One is that the neighbouring hospitals, Whips Cross, in Waltham Forest and Queen's here in Havering are under immense pressure already. Uh, taking away the services from people in Redbridge will um, put a lot of pressure on these hospitals and people are really worry that they're going to get the, the care they deserve. And the other issue is that local health services are very important to local people. It may suit the health service to centralise, um, but it means more travelling for local patients, it means more travelling for relatives um, and visitors, and I really don't think the health service takes into account those costs uh, onto our local communities when they consider decisions like this. Brilliant. Yep. I'm Mike Gapes, Member of Parliament for Ilford South. We've fought these proposals for four years. They've now come back again, and the decision they intend to take on December the 15th. I understand that if they go ahead and close the A&E at King George's, they will nevertheless have to build new facilities at Queen's and also look to having extra facilities in Newham to cope with the demand. This is nonsense. We need a hospital in Ilford for local people and their needs. More seriously, we've had a maternity hospital in Ilford since 1926, 
and they are now saying that, that you can have prenatal and postnatal in Ilford, but no births. And frankly, many of my constituents don't have access to cars, and when their families come to visit them and they've had a new baby born in the family, it will be discriminatory against those young mothers from the south of Ilford who have to come all this way to Romford or go to somewhere else to have their birth. We need maternity hospital in Ilford where we have our local families able to have their children born in Ilford and we will continue to fight this. This proposal is discriminatory and it discriminates against the poorest people and the poorest communities in Redbridge and in Barking and Dagenham and it must be opposed. Brilliant. Right. Yep. Right, the Redbridge Scrutiny Committee is... Must speak up a bit. Yeah, right. As chairman of the Redbridge Scrutiny Committee, I can say that the, uh, we still maintain the policy that we always have done, which we are against the closure of the A and E at King George Hospital. And also, we do still share concerns about the uh, future of the uh, paternity unit there. It was very encouraging at the last Joint Overview Scrutiny Committee that our concerns were shared by the other boroughs, uh, Havering in particular, Barking and Dagenham and Morgan Forest. Um, one of the uh, points about the plan to reduce the A&Es from, from six to five is that we have a concentration of hospitals in the inner London area, Homerton, Raw London and Newham, and also on the edge of the outer area, Morgan Forest, which will serve roughly 200,000 to 250,000 people. By closing the A8 King George, we have most of Redbridge, Barking and Dagenham and Havering, totalling 700,000 people, served by one A&E department. This does seem a rather obvious imbalance, and this is one of the main reasons why we're still, well, we're still fighting to maintain the A&E at King George. The other issue which is of, mo of concern to Havering councillors is the pressure that this will put on Queen's Hospital, the increased uh, number of people coming to ANE here, is it really sustainable? And there are concerns as to whether this whole scheme, although it might have, uh, shall we say, clinical uh, evidence to support it, is it really sustainable? And we also are aware that perhaps, although we're told clinic clinicians are basically supporting this, we know that it, it doesn't have 100% support. Um, so I, I do feel that we should continue the fight to retain the AE at King George and to ask Health and Health to have a look at these proposals again. Thank you very much.